the constantly changing face of the battlefield and the varying demands of the combat arms mean that for all units there is a need to have well-planned, well-rehearsed procedures for frequent changes of location on transition to war, from the very first deployment from barracks to tactical locations. Sound theory and practical, realistic training form the basis for operational movement, which must become second nature to everyone involved. In the early hours of the morning and at short notice, this squadron moved to pick up pre-planned loads at the depots and then dispersed to pre-wrecked, pre-designated hide locations. Now, they await further orders from the squadron commander, who is on his way from the regimental HQ. The squadron commander has already issued a warning order by radio for a move later that day, and his O-group is assembling at squadron headquarters. There, the troop commanders will be given detailed orders for the move and the consequent deployment of their troops. Our brigades are now fully deployed and in their prepared positions. The outloading phase is complete and we're now ready to redeploy to our phase two locations. Our mission, 36th Squadron, is to move to its phase two locations. 36th Squadron is to move to its phase two locations. Execution, general outline. The move will be by troops, and all troops will be established in their new locations by 1800 hours today. Task, A troop, you are to move to grid November Charlie 284873. November Charlie 284873. B Troop, you are to move to November Charlie 352795. November Charlie B Troop Commander now issues a warning order by radio so that his troop staff sergeant and admin sergeant can prepare their move at the specified time. I want you to send this warning order. Serial A. B Troop to move to grid November Charlie 352795. 352795. Bravo. No move before 1600. Charlie, move as per SOPs. Delta, recce group to be ready to move upon my return. You got that? Okay, send it now. The troop commander must now collect his recce party. Right, I'm going to give orders now for 10 minutes. 
Right, to confirm. Harbour party, leave 1610. Yeah, Alright, staff. First packet, 1630. Yeah. Second packet, 1645. Yeah. Last packet, 1700. Yeah. Remy, you bring up the rear of the last packet. Yeah. Synchronise watches. It will be 1530 in five seconds. Four, three, two, one, now. With everyone now briefed, a detailed reconnaissance must be made both of the route which the troop is to travel and of the area which it is to occupy. Okay, Corbin Newman, take a right here. Before he arrives in the general area, the troop commander will make a map appreciation of the most suitable location taking into consideration such factors as cover, defence, approach routes, circuits, admin area and so on. Selection of suitable accommodation within a given area demands a practised eye and rapid decision. Pull into the left just up here. Screen cover on. Right, the rest of you out. Corporal Newman, I want you to cover from on your left the tree there, 180 degrees to the front, especially the entrance. Myself and the recce group are going to clear the wood. A security sweep of the area will then be needed to ensure that it is safe for occupation. At the same time, the section guides will be shown the individual vehicle sites for their sections. Right, listen in. G10. Okay? A more detailed recce on foot has confirmed that the location is suitable for radio communication. Also, that there is a stores transshipment area with room enough for cranes and other MHE to operate. Now a sketch map can be drawn, showing entry and exit points, vehicle circuits, individual vehicle deployment, defence positions and the location for troop headquarters and admin area. There will almost certainly be a need for an area in which to conceal extra vehicles, even if they're only visiting, and also a helicopter landing zone. In the event of a surprise attack, the whole troop may have to move fast to an alternative location. And so, if possible, a second area should be wrecked. Often, especially in a rapidly changing tactical situation, it is simply not possible to find a suitable alternative area and so an RV, some easily recognisable point on the ground, may be specified instead. Having made his outline plan, the troop commander is now ready to receive the main body. 
In the meantime, members of the recce party will already be signing the route to the location. The RCT only sign the route from the release point, which will be on the MSR, the main supply route to the location. It's the job of the RMP to signpost the MSR itself. The recce party will also put out circuit signs, section area signs, and HQ and admin area signs. Remember that there is a very real danger of over-signing and thus compromising security. Signs must be instantly visible to drivers and totally invisible from the air. The troop commander will also look in more detail at the security of the location and make an outline defence plan. He'll have to coordinate his defence with any neighbouring units as he will seldom be in a totally isolated location. What's your route card? Muff? Meanwhile, back in the hide location, the admin sergeant has briefed the harbour party, who are now ready to leave. Nothing is left to chance. Every detail of every move is meticulously planned. The harbour party arrive, right on time. As soon as the harbour party is safely into the new location, the admin sergeant is briefed by the troop commander. Right, Sir Andrew, I want you to set the G10 up in the clearing just over there. Right, sir. Okay? Yeah. Get back to the vehicle, get them in as quickly as possible. Right, sir. The domestic vehicles are then quickly sighted and concealed. Driver Charlie, whiskey, whiskey. Only vehicles are in the pocket, my vehicle. Okay, Close behind the harbour party, the first section of the troop arrives at the location. This is a particularly critical moment, as the section must not be allowed to bunch up or stop at the entrance, even though they may have to slow down to pick up their guide. Vehicles are parked and concealed with the minimum of delay. As this is another hide location rather than a resupply location, vehicles are parked tailboard in. In the admin area, once the vehicles have been camouflaged, the cooks start preparing a meal, ready for the arrival of the rest of the troop. As the troop assembles, each section is shown its stand to and defensive positions. Morris, sir, look left. Edge of cops, left of arc. See, look to your front. Then it's time to carry out last parade servicing and check the vehicle check loads. The vehicle. Yeah, the clutch slipping a bit. Yeah, yeah, off. yeah that's all. Okay. Just that. As each section comes into the location, the same drill is carried out. As soon as the last section arrives, all the signs from the release point to the location are removed and counted. It's been a testing time for the troop commander. 
but his judgment has proved sound, and now the various reports and returns must be sent to squadron headquarters. The movement report, or MOVREP, summarizes the troops' state on completion of the move and contains details of the LZ and either the alternative location or the RV. The personnel report, or PERSREP, provides details of unit strengths, including those killed or wounded or missing. Also, there will be a vehicle availability return to submit. It is vital that all these forms are completed accurately and sent to squadron headquarters on time, so that the troops' strengths and weaknesses can be realistically assessed by the squadron commander. By now, though, the meal is ready, so the bulk of the troop can eat. Chicken chow mein, fish chips. This is probably the best time to carry out a weapons check. After all, this is the one place where everyone in the troop assembles. Although there is now a more relaxed atmosphere in the location, noise and movement should be kept to a minimum. Staff, alternative location. Taking advantage of a quiet few minutes, the troop commander has made notes for his O group and is now ready to issue his orders for the troop routine in this location. Come in. I'm going to give confirmatory orders and then we can get away for our meal. Everyone got notepaper? Much of this will be a standing operating procedure, but he must ensure that the defence plan, which will almost certainly include neighbouring units, is fully understood and that the password for the day is known. Troop routine is confirmed and any amendments are highlighted. In particular, the alternative location or the RV and the route to it must be known to everyone in the troop. Uh, yes, sir. Just got one. Could you just confirm the emergency harbour grid reference? Please? Emergency harbour area, grid reference, November Charlie, 363 457. 363 457. Right, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? No. Right, let's go for our meal. Well, see you later. Staff? Yankee 3 zero, over. It's not long before a tasking order is received for the distribution of combat supplies. Turn that straight to the truck commander, he's in the T10 area. All the boys in alright, Call Rigby? Sir. Everyone okay? Sir. They're all fed, are they? Yes, sir. How was the route down? Thanks very much, Corporal David Right, Corporal Rigby, I want to see Corporal Williams in my ops tent in five minutes, all right? Sir. Tell him to descrim and ready to move. Sir. And this is way to RV with the ACP. Yes. Any questions? Yes, sir. All right, Corporal Williams, away as quickly as you can. Yes, sir. Oh, Corporal Williams, by the way, we may well have moved location when you return in which case there'll be a Don R here with a grid of our new location, okay? Right, sir. Mr. Dean, drivers, report to me with your map. Okay, Mr. Dean, we're moving now to the ACP, which is a grid reference, November Charlie, 143468. The route that we're going to take is a long cow, seal, we will come off a seal, a grid reference, November Charlie, 320648. We're going to then pick up the signs for the ACP. These will be tax signs, one oblique nine four. Passwords, no change. Any questions?
think we've got, that's everything covered now and stuff. Yeah, I think everything's alright. Okay, well I'll just uh, get a couple of hours sleep now. Yeah, It'll be alright. I'll give you a knock if there's any part of the Sleep is vital if the troop commander and his sergeant are to be able to make rapid, coherent decisions, often just to sort out the snags. If the unexpected can happen, it almost certainly will. So it's essential for them to work a shift system in order to share the workload. Moves to new locations can be frequent and at short notice. Just as the troop commander decides that he must snatch a couple of hours sleep, his radio operator receives a warning order for a possible move to a new location the next day. Roger out. Staff? Hello, Staff. Sir? Hello, Staff. Sir, we've got a troop move tomorrow. It's a small village about 25 k's away. So I'll go away and wreck it at first light. Okay, then, well, if you wake me just before you go, I'll take over from you. In the meantime, if you have any problems, wake me. OK, sir. The new location is in a small village about 25 kilometres away. Having made a map appreciation, the troop staff sergeant decides to carry out his recce at first light. A village location brings with it differences in planning and selecting suitable areas for the troop. Camouflage will have to be square to conform with buildings, in contrast to the uneven outlines adopted in wooded areas. Barns and eaves afford good cover, but moving around the area on foot must be restricted if soldiers are to remain concealed. Back in the location, the routine of the troop continues. Right, Hodgson, your air sentry and chemical sentry. Air and NBC sentries watch out for hostile aircraft. Left here, left of arc, the tree. Sir, 180 degrees to the front. The track, your right of arc. Right, sir. You clear on your orders? Yes, sir. OK. OK, park up call with you. Put the air on and I'll bring the two commander. Yeah. When the troop staff sergeant returns from his recce, he's debriefed in detail by the troop commander. And there's not a problem, there's plenty of room, we should have no bother at all getting all the troops in. The village will make an ideal troop location, but the route, which looked perfectly good on the map, has a bridge which cannot be used by the troop's vehicles. And so, a diversion has to be planned. OK then. Right, if you go away then, staff, get yourself a cup of tea and come back and say in half an hour with the section commanders, I'll have finished my orders by then. OK, sir. All right. As soon as he can, the troop commander writes his notes in preparation for the next move, ready to brief his O group. He must remember that two section doesn't know about the move and will need to be guided from this location on their return. Mount up and move now. With everyone briefed, the harbour party moves out of the wood to be followed an hour later by the main body. A troop movement is an everyday operational occurrence and the cycle repeats itself over and over again. It's based on concurrent action by subunits and individuals and everyone is involved, from the troop commander to the most newly joined driver. 
It's vital, therefore, that everyone knows the routine inside out. And it's only by constant practice and thorough training that this high level of expertise can be acquired and maintained.